Hey Reddit, my name is Xander, and I've got a story that I never thought I'd have to tell. It's about my family, or at least, the family I thought I had. Up until a few months ago, if anyone had asked me, I'd have said we were picture perfect. I lived in this snug, warm house on the outskirts of Boise, Idaho with my wife Kalea, our daughter Elodie, who's 12, and a hyper little beagle named Sparky. I'm talking about a life straight out of those TV shows where everyone gets along. You know, the kind of life that has you grinning at the thought of coming home. That was us, or so it seemed. Kalia was the kind of woman who lit up the room, always organizing block parties or baking something delicious. Elidi, with her wild curls and big questioning eyes, was as smart as they come, glued to her books and full of hugs for her old man. Sparky, well, he was the little furball that never failed to make us laugh, always getting into some kind of mischief. We were a team, the three of us and the dog, against whatever life threw our way. Or, that's what I was led to believe. I was the guy who'd come home from work every day, throw a lady into the air as she laughed and then wrap Kalea in a hug that said, I'm so glad to be back here with you. We had it all figured out and life was good. But here's where it gets messy, folks. One evening, things started to unravel. I was looking for the pizza place's number on Kelly's phone because, you know, Friday night is pizza night. It's a sacred tradition in our house. But I stumbled upon something that was definitely not about pizza. There, popping out like a sore thumb amidst the usual texts about groceries and school pickups, were these messages from a guy named Jax. His texts were littered with heart emojis, the winky faces, and some stuff that made my stomach do backflips. I felt like I'd been punched in the goot. I just stood there, frozen, the phone heavy in my hand. Was I really seeing this? Kalia, with her laughter that filled our home, the mother of my child, sending hearts to some dude named Jax? It couldn't be right. Maybe it was a joke, a misunderstanding, a prank. I didn't want to believe it. I mean, who wants to believe that their sunshine is actually a storm waiting to happen? Hey everyone. Unfortunately, basically everyone who is watching these videos isn't subscribed. It would mean the world to me to quickly get out of the full screen video for three seconds and press that subscribe button. It's free and you can unsubscribe anytime. Sorry for bothering and thank you so much if you subscribed. So, I put the phone down, the number for pizza long forgotten. I tried to act normal, but inside, I was a mess of questions and doubts. I watched Kelia and Elidi, wondering if I was just being paranoid. But the images of those messages wouldn't leave my mind. It was like a dark cloud had settled over our little house, and suddenly it didn't feel so cozy anymore. I needed answers, but I was scared to ask the questions. So, there I was, playing pretend in my own life, smiling through a dinner where every laugh felt like a lie. And that, dear friends, was the beginning of the end of the happy family that never was. After the pizza night debacle, I spent the weekend wrestling with my thoughts, trying to piece together the puzzle that was suddenly my life. I was like a detective in one of those old noir films, except the case was my own marriage. It felt surreal, you know? By Sunday evening, the weight of those messages was like a lead vest, and I knew I had to clear the air. So, I braced myself and confronted Kalea. I remember my hands were shaking when I asked her about Jax. She just looked at me, her eyes wide with what I mistook for surprise. Then she laughed. Not the warm laugh that usually filled our home, but something sharp and quick. She told me Jax was just a friend from her yoga class, someone who made her laugh. You're being ridiculous, Xander, she said, shaking her head like I was a little kid who'd said something silly. I wanted to believe her, Reddit. I really did. But there was something off in her smile, something that didn't reach her eyes. I tried to convince myself that it was all in my head. Kalia was my wife, the love of my life, the mother of my daughter. Friends send each other emojis, right? Nothing to lose sleep over. But then, there was Elodie. My little girl, who'd always been daddy's biggest fan, started giving me the cold shoulder. She was whispering with her mom, giving me these long, searching looks that made me feel like I was on trial in my own home. Every time I walked into the room, their conversation would stop. Whisper, whisper, whisper. 
and then silence when I showed up. What really got to me was how she started locking her phone. This was the kid who used to beg me to play games on it, who didn't have a single secret. Now, all of a sudden, her phone was Fort Knox and I wasn't allowed in. The air in the house changed. It was like walking into a room where the floor might disappear at any moment. I felt like an outsider, like I'd stumbled into the wrong story and couldn't find the exit. Was I just being paranoid? That word kept spinning in my head, paranoid. I started second guessing everything. Maybe Kalea was right. Maybe I was just being ridiculous. Every laugh, every whisper, every look, they all became clues. But clues to what? The worst part, Reddit, was the silence. The silence when I asked how their day was and got nothing but mumbles in return. The silence when I tried to hug Kalia and she gently pushed me away, saying she was tired or not feeling well. The silence in my head when I tried to convince myself that everything was okay. I started to doubt my own thoughts, my own feelings. I'd look in the mirror and instead of seeing Xander, the loving husband and father, I saw a stranger, a man who didn't know his own wife and kid anymore. It was like standing on a bridge, watching the water below, and not knowing if you jumped whether you'd swim or sink. Hey again, Reddit. So, where were we? Ah yes, in the thick of my own personal soap opera. I wish I could tell you things got better, but life's not in the habit of handing out fairy tale twists. I remember it was a Thursday night when I overheard that conversation, the one that turned the nagging doubts into screaming alarms. I was coming back inside from taking out the trash when I heard their voices floating down from Elidi's bedroom window. I should have walked away, but I was drawn to the sound like a moth to a flame. You should be with who makes you happy, Mom, Elidi said, her voice serious and more grown up than I'd ever heard it. Those words felt like a gut punch. This wasn't some random pep talk. This was my daughter giving her blessing to what seemed like the dismantling of our family. I stood there frozen as the cold Idaho night air bit at my skin. Happy, she said, the irony of it twisted in my chest. Here I was, trying to keep us all happy by playing the part of the clueless husband. A few days later, the second domino fell. I was on our home computer when I noticed it running slower than usual. Being the semi-tech savvy dad that I am, I decided to do some digital cleaning. Kalea's email was logged in, she must have forgotten to log out. And there it was, a folder marked, work stuff. Innocent enough, but the universe has a sick sense of humor. Curiosity got the best of me, and I clicked. Work stuff? Not unless her job included exchanging love letters and cozy photos with Jax, whose face was now more familiar to me than my own reflection. Each email was a hammer building a coffin for our marriage. My dearest Kalia, I long for the next time we're together. You are my true happiness. I couldn't breathe. There it was, the life I didn't know, laid bare in pixelated confessionals and JPEG secrets. My heart raced. A mix of anger and heartbreak churned in my stomach. Confrontation was inevitable. This time, I had proof, solid and undeniable. So I faced Kalea with her own words, the emails printed out and laid between us like a challenge. But she was a fortress. She denied it all, with a fire in her eyes that I'd never seen before. She accused me of invading her privacy, of being a control freak. Don't you trust me, Xander? She spat, as if I was the one who had brought strangers into our marriage. She turned my world upside down, making me feel guilty for uncovering the truth. And for a moment, a fleeting, weak moment, I doubted myself. I wondered if I was the villain in her story, the bad guy who snooped and pried and broke the sacred trust between man and wife. But no, Reddit, I wasn't the bad guy. I was just the guy who couldn't see the wool that had been pulled over his eyes. The guy who believed in a happy family portrait, not realizing it was drawn with disappearing ink. The stage was set, the players were ready, and the lies, oh, the lies were just beginning to unravel. I told Kalia I had a business trip, a last minute deal that couldn't wait, real important stuff. She kissed me goodbye with that same detached peck that had become the norm, and a lady. 
She barely glanced up from her phone to wave me off. As I drove away, I could see Kalia's silhouette at the window, phone already in hand. My gut twisted. I didn't head to the airport. Instead, I parked a street over in my buddy's beat-up Camaro. There I was, slouched in the driver's seat, baseball cap pulled low, heart thumping in my chest. It felt like a stakeout in my own life, which is about as messed up as it sounds. Hours ticked by and doubt started to eat at me. What if I was wrong? What if those messages and emails were just... What? A fantasy? A joke? But then, as the afternoon sun began to dip, painting the Boise sky in shades of fire, I saw them. Kalea walked out, dressed up like it was date night. But the date wasn't with me. Moments later, Jax appeared, that too familiar stranger. My breath hitched as they met on the sidewalk, laughing about something I couldn't hear, couldn't be a part of. Their hands found each other, and that's when my heart didn't just break, it shattered. They were headed to Luciano's, the kind of place with cloth napkins and a wait list, the kind of place we'd saved for anniversaries and whispered sweet nothings over candlelight. I followed at a distance, the Camaro's engine a low growl beneath the city sounds. From a parking spot across the street, I watched them through the restaurant window. They picked a table, our table, near the back with a view of the park. When Jax kissed her hand across the white tablecloth, it was like watching a scene from someone else's life. Only I knew all the lines. I wanted to storm in there, to flip tables and demand answers. But I didn't. I sat there, a silent spectator to my own tragedy, fury boiling over, hands clenched so tight my knuckles turned white. It was real. All of it. The lies, the sneaking around, the betrayal. It was as tangible as the leather of the steering wheel beneath my grip. Living in a bad dream? No, this was worse. In dreams you wake up, there's relief. But there was no waking up from this, no escape from the sting of betrayal. It seared through me hot and fierce, leaving me to smolder in the wreckage of what I once thought was a happy life. And there, parked in shadows with a heart full of lead, I realized the depth of the lie I'd been living. This wasn't an accident, it wasn't a mistake, it was a choice, her choice. And it tortured everything. You'd think after the stakeout stunt, I'd have had enough drama to last a lifetime. But there's something about getting sucker punched by life. You either lie down and take it, or you stand up and start swinging. So, I went for round two, with the truth clenched in my fists. I waited until the next day, after the images had seared into my brain, turning every thought into a live wire. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, couldn't look at Kalia without seeing her laughing it up with Jax. When I confronted her, it was with a phone full of pictures, evidence that was as clear as daylight. This time, there was no room for denial, no corner to twist the truth into something else. I held up my phone, the photos glaring back at us in the quiet of our kitchen. You and Jax, I said, voice steady as a drumbeat. At Luciano's, at our table. I watched her, waiting for the mask to slip, for the lies to crumble. Kalia's face went through a gallery of emotions, shock, fear, anger, until it settled on something that looked like sorrow. Xander, she whispered, and there was a tremor in her voice, the first note of realness I'd heard in months. She broke down then, tears spilling over, hands shaking. The affair wasn't news anymore, but the why. It was a gut punch. You changed, Xander. You stopped being fun. You got so... serious and dull. Jax? He's exciting. He makes me feel alive. It was as if she'd handed me the blame, gift-wrapped, like I was the one who'd pushed her into someone else's arms. I stood there, dumbfounded, anger boiling into rage. Then, Elidi. She'd been a silent shadow in the hallway, but at her mother's cry, she burst in like a summer storm. Dad, how could you? She screamed, her little face twisted in anger. You made mom unhappy, you're a liar. My own kid, my little girl, looked at me like I was the monster under the bed, the villain in the story. The world fell away. It was just her words, stabbing at me, each one a verdict of guilt. I wanted to reach out to her, to explain, to make her see. 
but she was past listening. There it was, my family, a house of cards in a windstorm. The confrontation I'd thought would be the end was just another beginning, a twisted path into a thicket of blame and hurt. I was the husband who'd lost his wife to a fantasy, the father whose daughter had turned against him, the man who thought he could fix things, only to find that some breaks can't be mended. So, read it, I laid it all out and what did it get me? A broken heart, a daughter who thinks I'm the bad guy, and a home that felt like a war zone. I had stepped into the ring expecting a fight, but I wasn't ready for this kind of battle. The kind where even when you're right, you're wrong. The kind where the ground falls out from beneath you and you're just falling with nothing to grab onto. After the shouting had faded and the house had settled into a heavy silence, I was left alone with the shattered pieces of what used to be my life. That night, I lay in the darkness, the scenes of betrayal looping in my head like some twisted highlight reel. By the time dawn broke, painting a pale streak of light across the room, I'd made up my mind. No more Mr. Nice Guy, no more Xander the doormat. It was time for action, time to hit back. First things first, money. It always comes down to money, doesn't it, Reddit? I logged into our online banking with a grim sort of determination. My fingers didn't even hesitate as I transferred the bulk of our savings into a new account, just my name on it this time. Next were the credit cards, snip, snip, all of Kalia's cards cut off. She wouldn't be whining and dining with Jax on my dime, not anymore. But that was just financial foreplay. The main event was Jax, or more specifically, his unsuspecting wife. How do you tell a stranger that their life's about to implode? There's no good way, no hallmark card for this kind of news. I found her through social media, a smiling picture of her with Jax, hashtagged Aitzaisaishan soulmates. The irony wasn't lost on me. I called her, heart pounding like a drum solo, and asked if we could meet. She sounded puzzled, but agreed. We picked a neutral place, a coffee shop, where the baristas were too busy to eavesdrop. Sitting across from her, I felt like I was holding a grenade with the pin already pulled. I took a deep breath and laid it all out, the emails, the photos, the late night whispers. She listened, her face going from confusion to horror to a kind of numb resignation. I watched her world crumble, saw the pain in her eyes and something in me fractured. What was I doing? Was I serving justice or just spreading the pain? But there was no going back. I'd opened Pandora's box and all the dark things flew out wild and uncontrollable. She thanked me with a voice that was barely a whisper and walked away. I don't know what happened to her after, but I knew I'd set fire to Jax's life just as surely as he'd helped torch mine. I drove home that day feeling like an avenging angel, cold and righteous. But as the adrenaline faded, doubt crept in. I'd struck back, but at what cost? Kalia's world was shaken, sure, but so was Elite's. And Jax's wife, another victim in a game she didn't even know she was playing. Revenge is a strange thing, Reddit. It's bitter and sharp, and it spreads like wildfire, burning everything it touches, leaving you wondering if the ashes were worth the warmth. So there I was, the architect of my own vengeance, standing in the ruins of what I'd destroyed, not sure if I felt like a hero or a villain. But one thing was certain, there was no going back. The die was cast, the cards were on the table, and the game, the game, had just begun. The first domino to fall was Jax. Turns out, Jax's wife was not the kind to cry into her pillow. She was a warrior, a woman of action. She marched right up to Kalea's company and dropped the bomb about the affair, complete with the emails and photos I had given her. The company had a strict policy against fraternizing especially the married people having affairs kind of fraternizing. Jax was out of a job faster than you can say scandal. The news of his job loss spread like a virus through our social circles. People I hadn't spoken to in months were texting me asking if I knew if I was okay. I wasn't. I was the farthest thing from okay. Kalia was livid. The day she found out, she came at me like a hurricane her words laced with venom. You've destroyed everything, Xander, she screamed, her face red, her hands balled into fists at her side. You're a vindictive, spiteful. The names she called me would have made a sailor blush. 
but worse than Kalia's fury was Elidi's silence. She wouldn't look at me, wouldn't speak to me. She moved around the house like a ghost, her eyes hollow, her voice gone. She'd been my chatty, bubbly girl, and now, nothing. I might as well have been transparent. Once, when I tried to talk to her, to explain why I did what I did, she just shook her head and said, You broke us, Dad. You broke everything. And then she walked away. That hurt more than any shouting match with Kalea. My daughter, my heart, looking at me like I was the bad guy. Like I'd will fully detonated our family life just for the heck of it. So there I was, read it, the man who had pulled the thread that unraveled the tapestry of his own life. I'd wanted justice, or maybe it was revenge, I'm still not sure. What I got was a lonely house and a ticket to Pariahville. It's strange how you can be surrounded by people and yet feel utterly alone. That was me. I was the man in the eye of the hurricane, watching as the winds tore everything apart. I'd started this chain reaction thinking I would come out the other side feeling vindicated, feeling right. Instead, I felt empty. There's no glory in being the agent of chaos in your own story, no matter how justified you think you are. There's just the fallout, and fallout, as I learned, sticks to you long after the bomb has gone off. As the days turned to weeks and the drama refused to quiet down, I did what I thought I'd never do. I filed for divorce. It was a word that tasted like ash in my mouth, a word that, once spoken, couldn't be taken back. The papers were stark, the black ink on white paper spelling out the end of a once beautiful chapter. When it came to Elidi, my shining star, I wanted her with me. I wanted to fight for her, to pull her out of the crossfire and into safety. But when we sat down in those stuffy offices with lawyers who spoke in sterile terms, Elidi's voice was quiet but firm. I want to stay with mom. It cut deeper than any betrayal. Kalia had cheated, lied, and broken our vows, but Elodie, Elodie still saw her as home. So I moved out. I left the house with a bag of clothes and a heart so heavy I could barely carry it. I found a small apartment on the other side of Boise, a place with bare walls and a view of the parking lot. It was a far cry from the home I'd built with laughter and dreams. I'd sit there at night, the silence deafening, and wonder if any of it was worth it. The truth had not set me free, it had put me in a different kind of prison, one with bars made of memories and what-ifs. I missed Elidi fiercely, every single day. I'd reach for my phone to send her a message to try and bridge the gulf between us, only to remember her words and let it fall back into my pocket. Sometimes I'd drive by the house, slowing down just enough to catch a glimpse of the life I'd left behind. I'd see Elidi through the window, and my heart would lurch. But I never stopped never got out, because she wasn't mine to hold on to anymore, not really. And so, read it, here I am, the guy who blew up his life in search of something like justice. I sit in my apartment filled with secondhand furniture and wonder if it was worth it. The truth? It's a double-edged sword. It cuts both ways, and nobody wins in the end. The cost of truth was high, too high. It cost me my daughter's laughter, my wife's touch the joy of being a family. I'm left wondering if ignorance is bliss, or if the IG of knowledge is the price. We pay for some deeper, sadder wisdom. I guess the moral of my story is this. The truth will set you free, sure, but it'll tear everything else down in the process. And once everything you love is rubble at your feet, freedom feels a lot like being lost. <laughs>